Well, yet another move higher today for stocks on hopes of a completed trade deal between the U.S. and Canada that we were just talking about. The S&P 500 and the Nasdaq Composite hitting all-time highs during the session uh, today. And we had the news on the economy logging its best performance in nearly four years. Second quarter GDP growth revised up. Growth rate of 4.2 percent, the old rate 4.1 percent. And we already know that consumer confidence is near an 18-year high. So that's where we are. We're joined tonight by Lindsay Bell, investment strategist with CFRA Research, and also by David Nelson, chief strategist with Bell Point Asset Management. Welcome to you both. We talk all the time, Lindsay, about corporate profits and how that's driving this stock market. The Commerce Department told us second quarter 16.1 percent growth overall in corporate profits. I mean, for all the noise that's out there, American companies are doing very, very well. Anything that slows us down now that you see? Well, no, you know what? I think the other thing that a lot of people haven't talked about or focused on is the earnings have been really good, but top line sales have been very, very strong. Which is strong a better well. sign, I guess. That's a better sign. 10.3% sales growth in the second quarter. That's an acceleration from 9% in the prior two quarters, and 4% has been the average since we've emerged from the most recent recession. Right. So that's pretty impressive because we have EBIT margins that are near all time highs, 15.5%, and they're expected to expand through the next couple quarters. And we're going to need sales to continue to move higher to, to keep that momentum. It strikes me, David, that it's a good time to be an American company yeah, right now. It, you know, it's it, a good it time is. in corporate America. And one of the things that came out, and we saw it in the economic data, is that companies finally have some, some pricing power. They can finally raise prices on some goods. Of course, that, from the consumer side, sure. means you pay more for goods. Um, how does that all work? Itself? Pricing power is a, a, a huge component. And to take on to what Lindsay just said, you know, there's a lot you can do to massage the bottom line. All kinds of gimmicks you can use as an accountant to, to get through that. But there's not a lot you can do with sales. Either you have it or you don't. Right. Uh, but I think it may be a lot simpler than that. We could talk about numbers and that. But I think a lot of Americans today just feel really good about their future. They feel yeah. good about their job. They feel good about the prospects of even getting a better job. And well, that's there was a, dynamic a survey. That, yeah. A journal had a story about that today, about just people happier in their jobs than they've been in many, many years, happier with their jobs. I don't think that's a dynamic a dynamic that we've had really since the 1990s. So I think it's pretty encouraging uh, right now. And that's when you open your wallet, you know, when yeah. you really feel good about your future. And that's translating into consumer sentiment. We had a monster number just the other day, 133. That was pretty exciting. It's really amazing. Anybody worried about anything? Otherwise, we'll end the segment. No worries. Nobody. <laughs> well, I do. I do worry about what's going to happen with China. We're getting some great news out of Mexico and Canada. Yes. And the trade deals there. That's kind of the easy part. But the eight hundred million dollar gorilla whatever, in the yeah. room, whatever you want to call it, is is China. It's going to be a major issue. When we're at these highs like this, this is when the voice in the back of your head is going. Ooh. Yeah. Well, I thought it was you know, interesting. The president tweets now. that statement, which was by as usual presidential uh, tweet. The last part of it, we just read it in the last. Um, segment that we were doing said that the trade disputes and other problems, I think is the way the uh, statement was phrased, will be solved by President Trump and President Xi. And, you know, a couple of people have told me that, that know China pretty well, that said that's the way this is going to happen. We saw all these low level meetings with other countries. Sometimes that's how it happens. You iron it out with the lower level officials and then everybody signs off on it. I do wonder in this case if those two guys, big egos, have to sit down, if apparently maybe in November, and figure it out. But it's a long way between now and then. I think, I think they have to sit down. And I think, I think in the end, we've talked about this in the past, constructing a deal where both can save face and both look good to the constituents, that's going to be the art of the deal. And that's what the president's well, going to have to achieve. You're right. We did, David and I were, uh, were on yesterday. It was, I was filling in on a different show, on Trish Regan's show, and we were saying the same thing. And I think I said to you, David, how, did, how does that happen? How do the Chinese, quote unquote, save face? There I didn't are, have the answer. Maybe Lindsay Right. Does. That's why I was going to ask Lindsey. <laughs> I don't How, know that what I is have the, the answer, what's but. the that's the but that is the big question right because it's one thing to hammer China and say we have leverage over them but in order for them to sign on to a deal and not just to prolong this you got to give them something too no no, I agree with you, and I don't know what the, the exact answer is, but uh, what I do know is that China is hurting right now. Look at their stock market. You're seeing um, they're, they're changing their monetary policy. They're becoming much more easy in that area. Yeah. Um, the central bank is, is loosening money so that they can handle some of, some of the, the pain that they're feeling right here, right now. You think they're close to giving in, though? The math doesn't I mean, work for them. Yeah, you know, yeah the math doesn't work for point? them. At what point? The math does not. I don't see how the math works for them. I mean, we... 
export to them maybe 130 billion, you know, and they right. send over to us nearly a half a trillion. The other thing is that we don't want doesn't them work to out. Fail. They can't match us dollar for dollar. We don't want impossible. them to fail too miserably and drag everybody else down, right? So there is sort of a balance here. Exactly, and that's why we need to solve this problem sooner rather than later because corporations are operating in the real world day by day, and yeah. they they make hiring decisions and they make investing decisions based on that. Here in the U.S., we've seen our companies start to really ex spend more money, business investments. That number was revised up in the Q2 revision that we got today that was mm -hmm. certainly encouraging and you know it's much better than what we saw over the past several years which was flat to negative capex right. growth and so we're finally seeing investments there we need that con to continue yeah it sounds like we looked for issues talking about china for as long as we did but you're right things overall things are good things yeah. are pretty good for especially in corporate america thanks to both of you good to thanks see you as usual